Have you ever felt triggered in a place where others feel calm? You're not imagining it. Science shows that trauma doesn't just live in the mind, it rewires your body. Polyvagal theory by Dr. Stephen Porges explains that your vagus nerve, the core of your parasympathetic system, has two branches. One supports connection and social ease. The other shuts you down when danger looms. After trauma, your system may misread safety cues and default to alarm or freeze even when you're safe. That hyper alert or shutdown state may feel like a flaw. But now we know. It's an adaptive survival trick gone haywire. Let's step deeper. Complex PTSD, CPTSD, is different. ICD-11 calls it a trauma-related disorder where prolonged trauma causes extra layers, emotional dysregulation, negative self-beliefs, and relational chaos. Neuroimaging shows trauma reshapes key brain areas like the amygdala, hippocampus, and prefrontal cortex, disrupting memory, fear regulation, and safety recognition. Inflammation even alters cellular pathways in PTSD, offering insight into possible future treatments. If you've been told you're overreacting, chances are it's your nervous system protecting you. That's profound. You're not broken. You've been coded for survival. Most people think trauma lives in your mind, but it actually lives in your nervous system, in your blood pressure, your hormones, your gut. Your body becomes a historian, repeating the story of what happened even when your brain tries to forget. And that's why trauma can't be thought away. Let's talk biology. When you're in danger, your amygdala fires up like an alarm system. Your hypothalamus floods your body with stress hormones. Your vagus nerve decides whether you fight, flee, freeze, or fawn. These responses keep you alive. But when trauma is chronic, this whole system gets stuck. You start reacting to everything like it's a threat. This is especially true for people with CPTSD who were never allowed to return to safety. Maybe your home was the battlefield, or the threat came in waves so often your body stopped recovering between them. Now your baseline is hypervigilance, and normal life feels anything but normal. Here's what neuroscience shows. Chronic trauma physically reshapes your brain. The hippocampus, your memory center, shrinks. The amygdala gets hyperactive, and the prefrontal cortex, the part that makes thoughtful decisions, starts to go offline. That's not dysfunction. That's adaptation. Your brain reorganized itself to survive. You weren't broken. You adapted. Your nervous system became hyper-aware because it had to. You people pleased because it worked. You shut down, went numb, dissociated. Because that was safer than feeling. These weren't flaws. They were survival codes. The real question isn't, what's wrong with me? It's, what happened to me? And then, what is still happening in my body right now? Because trauma doesn't just live in the past. It lives in your muscle tension, your sleep patterns, your digestion, your breath. Healing isn't about rehashing your worst memories. It's about creating safety in the now. And that starts with your nervous system, not just with talk therapy, but with movement, stillness, breath, touch, rhythm, anything that helps your body feel what safety is supposed to feel like. If you've lived with CPTSD, your nervous system learned to overadapt. It reads facial expressions too fast. It hears criticism in neutral tones. It flinches at change. Because your body is trying to stay ahead of pain, it's exhausting, but it makes sense. Polyvagal theory explains this. You're not just anxious or lazy. Your vagus nerve controls your state. When it senses threat, it pulls you into fight, flight, or freeze. And when that system misfires, you live in survival even when you're safe. This is biology, not weakness. What if your healing doesn't start with a breakthrough thought? What if it starts with your breath, with curling into a weighted blanket, with rocking back and forth? These aren't silly self-care hacks. They're somatic regulation, and they send the message, I'm safe now. Even your fascia remembers trauma. That thin web under your skin? It stores physical tension from years of bracing. The jaw that won't unclench. The shoulders always up. The hips that never rest. Your body keeps score. But it can also release. Studies show trauma survivors have different baseline cortisol levels, different immune responses, and altered gut-brain communication. You're not imagining your chronic fatigue. 
or your gut issues, or the way you crash after a social interaction. Trauma shapes your biology, so healing must include your biology too. Epigenetics proves this isn't just personal, it's generational. Children of trauma survivors often inherit stress responses in their genes. You might be carrying the weight of pain you never personally experienced. But here's the radical hope. Rewiring is possible for you and for the generations after you. So what actually works? Nervous system safe practices, somatic tracking, gentle movement, ritual, rest. Not the kind of push-through healing that forces your body to override its signals, but practices that earn back your body's trust. Healing isn't a TED Talk. It's rocking on the floor in your pajamas. It's canceling plans without guilt. It's journaling with your hand on your chest. It's unlearning urgency. It's saying, I don't need to be better right now. I just need to feel safe. This is why I created the Narrative Rewire Framework, TM. To walk with you, not as a guru, but as someone who has sat in that pain and found tools that work with your body not against it. Tools rooted in neuroscience, in ritual, in reclamation. Your body is not a battlefield, it's a map. It remembers the pain, but it can also remember peace, safety, hope. It just needs enough evidence, one micro practice at a time. If you've been misunderstood, mislabeled, or just plain exhausted by trying to heal the right way, you're not alone. You deserve more than coping. You deserve to come home to yourself. Start where you are. Your nervous system will meet you there. 